Tonight on Business Prime, Data Protection Commission begins prosecution of more than 250 firms in the country for various data breaches. We'll hear from the executive director who made an official complaint to the Attorney General. So today we came to present a list of these defaulting institutions uh, to the Attorney General and the value of the amount that they owe uh, us as a government institution, which is money for the government, to the tune of about 1.5 a million Ghana cities by government to account for COVID-19 spending raises concerns about the prudent expenditure management among the country's international partners. To date, the calls for forensic audit of the COVID-19 related expenditure have not been heeded, and that has given room for all manner of accusations and counter accusations. When a health sector has strong and organized financial management framework, Plus, Cocoa Board begins implementation of rehabilitation program for farmers in cocoa growing communities. All the policies our chief executive and his able assistants have put in place so far are yielding positive results. So we are telling the farmers to buy into Cocoa Board's policies. All these business stories coming up shortly, but we'll begin the bulletin with commodities. Tonight, the Data Protection Commission has submitted a list of 251 private sector and public institutions that failed to comply with data protection laws. The move as part of an official commencement of prosecution which seeks to recoup about 1.5 million cities to the state. The Executive Director of the Data Protection Commission, Patricia Eduse Poku, has been speaking to journalists after handling over the list of defaulters to the Attorney General's Department. Since uh, the beginning of this year, we have been, uh, in fact, since October 2020, we gave them an amnesty period of six months to uh, allow those who are defaulting or under the radar to come and register themselves as required under Section 46.3 of our Act to comply with the oblig obligation to register. Some came, others still haven't. And so uh, we have compiled a list of those who uh, have failed to register with the commission. We have about 800,000 on our list. This list is only 2.5% of the list, which is about 251 uh, institutions who have received their 14-day notices from us to come and make the, the, put themselves in good standing with the commission within 14 days and have failed. So since they have failed, today we came to present a list of these defaulting institutions uh, to the Attorney General and the value of the amount that they owe uh, us as a government institution, which is money for the government, to the tune of about 1.5 uh, million Ghana cities that they should have paid the Commission since they, are, they became applicable to pay and they haven't paid. Today we have been having discussions with the Attorney General on her, in her office to uh, try and get her to accept the, um, not the Attorney General, the Office of uh, Public Prosecution to, to accept our list and then to prosecute these defaulting individuals. After our engagement with her today, she has um, uh, discussed and agreed with us that we give them one last opportunity by actually uh, establishing uh, the fact that they are aware of this uh, uh, obligation uh, by writing to them and quoting our Section 56 which gives us the power to prosecute them if they are defaulting. 
Away from that, the passage of the electronic transactions levy in this particular effect by Parliament on Tuesday has sparked heated debate in Kumasi. After repeated objections by a section of the Ghanaian public, many are surprised at its passage. Some supporters of the e-levy are, however, unaware of the percentage deduction of each transaction they make. There is more in this report. A large number of young people work in the mobile money vending industry. However, many of these vendors fear they will be forced out of business as a result of Parliament's ratification of the e-levy bill. Almost that is more some customers have been here to withdraw all their monies. If it continues this way, our businesses may collapse. People prefer transacting electronically when buying. They refuse to add charges too. Some respondents are also keen on accountability for levies charged. With a consistent increase in fuel prices, e-levy is not a good move. Until we see what the e-levy charges will be used for, we would not accept its passing. I'm sure the e-levy will not be used for its intended purpose. Drivers pay one CD levy to the Tema oil refinery, but the refinery has not been recovered for years. There are, however, others who believe the passage of the e levy is a good move by the government. The government knows best. Let us comply with them. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. Now, the inability of governments to make all expenditure and procurement on COVID-19 mitigation efforts public is a cause of worry for the country's international partners. This is according to Budget Ghana, which has increased speculation that government is not transparent and accountable to citizens. The group is calling on governments to heed the call for a forensic audit into its COVID-19 expenditure. We have more in this report. The partners, led by Budgets Ghana, held a roundtable discussion to deliberate on accountability in the procurement processes and expenditure sector since COVID-19 outbreak. Executive Director for Budgets Ghana, Ray Fifi Inkum, in a speech, stressed the need for Ghana to show to the world how expenditures were managed during the hike of the pandemic. He assured that the group will push to get accountability from government. The primary role of financial management in the health sector is to manage public funds and risk in a way that helps to increase access to quality health care. The COVID-19 pandemic and the confusion that rocked the states over lack of accountability should serve as a lesson to all of us. Till date, the calls for forensic audit of the COVID-19 related expenditure have not been heeded, and that has given room for all manner of accusations and counter accusations. When a health sector has strong and organized financial management framework, the state is able to provide efficient health care to all citizens. 
Some members of the civil society organization in health say they have no option than to apply to the Right to Information Office for all the data on government expenditure. Here is Felix Ankwa of the Economic Governance Platform. Last year in March, IMF published, published a list of countries that are complying to the, present their receipts and stuff. And you have countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, which are war on having documented, scanned document of procurement and everything. But Ghana was not on the list. And you can see from the presentation right now, I think we already had, we had one score out of a whole lot of six or seven. So that shows the gap. Information is key for accountability. So government needs to provide those information. So are you, are you going to make use of the RTI to seek for more? Definitely, I think it does to. I think it does, but I think there, there needs to be more tricks about it so that it's easily accessible, you know. The round table is expected to come up with some recommendations for the government. Has begun the implementation of what they call the cocoa rehabilitation program for farmers in cocoa growing areas in the central region. The program is aimed at cutting down all diseased and unproductive cocoa farms and replanting them with hybrid cocoa seedlings to improve cocoa yields in the region, addressing farmers at a rally to sensitize cocoa farmers in the uh, Aguna Nyankrom District, Cocoa F Officer of the Cocoa Health Extension Division of the Ghana Cocoa Board, Prince Philip Awensi, entreated the farmers to embrace the policy to enable them fare well in the cocoa business. Richard Kojonyako has more in the story. The purpose of the cocoa rehabilitation program for the farmers is to cut all diseases cocoa farms of farmers at no cost to the farmer. The farmers are then paid a compensation of 1,000 Ghana cities per one hectare for a farm cut. The replanting cost, according to Cocoa Board, is also borne by the government. With this program, the Ghana Cocoa Board replants with plantain suckers as temporary shade. With every one hectare cocoa farm, 1,100 plantain suckers are planted to provide temporary shade to the cocoa seedlings during growth. Nyakrum District Cocoa Officer of the Cocoa Health Extension Division of the Ghana Cocoa Board, Prince Philip Awensi, explains the Ghana Cocoa Board has recruited farmhands who work at the cocoa farm at no cost to the farmer. We regularly meet our cocoa farmers who are the producers of the crop to interact with them because uh, Cocoa Board has put in place a lot of productivity enhancement interventions so that at the end of the day, if a farmer is harvesting, say, three, four bucks per acre, the farmer can do more than that. We are talking about 10 to 15 bucks per acre here. So as part of our educational program, we came to meet uh, the farmers here to sensitize them, to tell them to actually implement whatever policy Cocoa Board has put in place so that at the end of the day, the results will show on the field. So that is why we are here. We are basically here today for Farmers Rally to rekindle, to reawaken their spirit with regards to cocoa farming so that at the end of the day, they will see that whatever intervention Cocoa Board is putting in place, it is yielding positive results. Mr. Awensi says they would continue to hold rallies and sensitize the farmers for the implementation of the program that aims at improving the cocoa yields of the country and by extension increasing the income of the farmers. And those of us on the ground, we are on the fold. We are the technical men on the fold and it behooves all of us to occasionally meet the farmers to sell the good idea from our chief executive to them and our advisors all the policies our chief executive and his able assistants have put in place so far are yielding positive results. So we are telling the farmers to buy into Cocoa Ball's policies so that at the end of the day, if a farmer is harvesting three, four bucks, like I said earlier, he can increase it to 10, 15, 20 bucks because the pollination we did, it is one of the intervention. A farmer could harvest 30, 20 bucks per acre and that is what our chief executive is aiming to see because he has always said that anytime he gets to farmers farm and see that the productive capacity of the cuckoo tree is very high i mean he becomes very happy because it tells us that um, the policies he's putting in place is actually giving us positive results 
Currently, the Nyakrum district has treated and replanted over 134 hectares of disease farms as at 2021 and still treating more this year. The Ghana Cocoa Boss appeal is to tell the farmers that they should embrace the program and get involved in re-establishing their farm for them. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejunya Akon, Cape Coast. Ghana can access the $32 trillion global real estate market if government and players in the real estate industry institute better financing structures for housing. According to a retired professor of urban development and management studies at the University of Ghana, Professor K. C. Shebe Yado, having the right financial structure is a huge step for the country to attract huge investment. He spoke at a real estate workshop organized by the University of Ghana Business School. Government and professionals in the real estate industry have been urged to properly structure their financing to attract international investments. Speaking at a real estate workshop organized by the University of Ghana Business School, retired professor of urban development and management studies, Professor Casey Sebeyadom, advised participants to look beyond the country for funding for the sector. What we have now is that a lot of our major developments going on, with all due respect, Madam Chairman, in rich airports, cantonments are being financed from outside. Our banks, even if the funds are com were coming through our banks, then some capacity building will, you know, help the banks. But no, I'm telling you that there is real estate funding sitting. You know, if you have the right structure, you can access it. Money doesn't know location or, you know, doesn't have any color. All money wants to know is that it will come back. And if the money knows that this place is even so profitable, it's not coming back. It's, it will continue to stay there. The University of Ghana Business School has introduced a new master's degree program in real estate financing. Chief Operating Officer for CH Group of Companies, Cynthia Akwe, lauded the university for developing such a course. A course in the UGSB, UGBS program covering policy and environmental legal frameworks, as well as social and affordable housing, will be welcome. Real estate is a tangible asset. You can touch it and feel it. And that stops people thinking past the physical. But you absolutely need to understand the finance behind it get it right. A mix of real estate expertise and financial skill is a very powerful pairing. Today's real estate developer or investor needs to be more numerate than his or her predecessor, tomorrow's even more so. Therefore, a curriculum covering financial modeling cases, real estate finance, commercial real estate analysis, capital markets, REITs, REIT analysis, etc., will be helpful. Deputy Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Paul Ababio, indicated that since the establishment of the Real Estate Investment Trust, there has been little or no investment in the sector, despite real estate being a determiner of the state of a country's GDP. Typically, the market is ahead of a regulator, unfortunately in this space. Uh, we got pressure to do this guideline, but when we finished it, we asked who's coming to do it now, and we're still waiting. Um, if you look at GDP measurements, um, the ancillary services from real estate, um, accounting, legal services, banking transactions, all feed into GDP measurements. So it has an automatic multiplier effect. When you see one building going up and the building costs one million, it means that the ancillary, the money that went into that one million seat has passed through several hands. You're watching Prime Business. We're going for a short break. Do stay with us. Well, so we have brought to you the latest stories in the world of business. We shall now take you to the international scene where we bring you updates on developments happening there, after which we're going to be ending the bulletin and introducing Prime Sports. Do stay with us. I'm Charles Aite.